Okay, so today I'm going to ask you guys to do some math problems to show me the understood speed of sound stuff. So with sound waves, I want you to remember they're longitudinal pressure waves. We want to figure out how fast the energy travels in a sound wave, and that is determined by what it is traveling through. We see that sound is relatively slow compared to light. Whenever there's a lightning strike or fireworks, we see the explosion and then it takes time for that sound wave to reach us. How quickly does it reach us? Well, it depends on what it's traveling through. It travels very fast through solids, much slower through gases. With solids, the particles are tightly packed. The energy can transfer from particle to particle really rapidly. With gases, the particles are farther apart and the travel for energy is much slower. In air only, this is the formula to figure out how quickly sound travels. This is the temperature in Celsius. This will be the speed of the sound. Once you get your answer, that speed will then go in your formula distance over time. Okay, the first problem you're going to do is a lightning strike, just like this one here. You're going to see the lightning strike. You're going to time how long it takes the sound to reach you. And it's going to be 6.4 seconds. And the temperature is 32 degrees Celsius. Please show all your work. I'm not grading your final answer. I'm grading on whether or not you can lay out your work in such a way that it's easy to follow. Make sure you show the formulas, the numbers you plug in, and your final answer with units and box it off. Again, the credit will be for the work and the organization, not for the final answer. Okay, the second problem will be from a few years ago. We have Diane Parker up to bat at a softball game. I am videotaping it right along the third baseline. I'm standing right near the uh, foul pole. And in slow motion, you're actually able to see the ball hit her bat. And then the sound happens when the ball was right there. I don't know if you're able to pick it up through this video or not, but the sound took time to reach me. It took 35 frames worth of video, and I was filming it at 240 frames per second. So figure out how much time it is. Use the fact that it was a 15 degree Celsius day, just like it is today, and figure out how far it would be from home plate to that uh, home run flagpole where I was standing, okay? Again, frames and frames per second, just do factor label to get it to time. This next one is a little tricky. We're now underwater, so don't use sound in air. Use sound in seawater, ocean water, salt water. We are sending out a signal. We are bouncing it off the boat, and we're trying to figure out how far away the boat is, or conversely, how far away the submarine is. It says the echo comes back 3.4 seconds after we send it out. And remember, when you're measuring the distance, that sound wave has to travel twice. So that 3.4 seconds is the total travel time. So when you get your distance to figure out how far away the boat is, you got to make sure you account for the fact that the sound traveled that distance twice. And you only want that distance once. The next one, we're going to have a uh, hypothetical Mars rover creating a sound wave that is picked up by another lander on Mars. And I'm going to see if you can figure out the speed of sound through the Martian atmosphere. It's not obviously going to be the same as it is here on Earth. The Mars atmosphere is made of different gases, and they are much less concentrated than they are here on Earth. And we have way different temperatures, okay? So don't use what we learned on Earth. Just use your velocity formula and base it off of distance and time and figure out the speed of sound through the Martian atmosphere. The next one, we have Mr. McCarran in the parking lot. 
He's going to strike the drum. He is standing 75 meters away from us. And the sound is going to reach us 223 milliseconds after he hits the drum. And you can see both his mouth move and then the sound arrived later. And you can see him hit the drum and the sound arrived later. Based on that delay, I'm going to ask you guys to figure out what was the temperature that day. So we know the time, we know the distance, figure out the speed, and then work backwards to figure out the temperature on that specific day. Finally, the hardest one is one you're going to do on your own. You are standing on the ground watching fireworks. The firework is going to explode some distance above where it's launched. The sound wave is going to travel diagonally toward you. Here it goes. Up, 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 up. When it runs out of kinetic energy, it will explode. You can see the sound wave traveling toward you. It reaches you so many milliseconds away, and your job is to figure out the height of the explosion. So when you do your math, you're going to be figuring out the diagonal distance. You then use that to get the vertical distance. You know how far you are from the place where the fireworks are being fired, so hopefully this will not be that hard. Okay, best of luck with all of these. And again, you're graded on your um, work, your neatness, and how easy it is for me to follow what you did. I'm not as concerned with the final answer. So show me your process, and that's what I'll give you your credit for. Good luck, and we'll see you soon.